with y'all. I'm back at it again. I today we got one of the real original goats on the track. Man, Boosie too old to be doing shit like this, bro. No, I'm playing y'all. I, I I'm so glad he is. Honestly, I feel like he is part of what we need in hip hop because he's just. He brings that vibe, bro. Like, you can tell he authentic, even though he's not perfect. He ain't no perfect nigga, no perfect rapper. But the realness of him and just how he not letting nothing, no industry shit, no Hollywood shit dictate him, his family, and the way he runs his shit. You feel me? He's always kept that shit 100% P, bro. Like, no shit. No, no bullshit. Like, for real. I respect Boosie. Although I don't agree with everything. He says or does. Nigga be crazy sometimes. But shit. I ain't gonna ignore right, what's right in front of me. You know. I definitely ain't gonna hate on the nigga for like doing some shit. That you know. I ain't got no business even knowing. That ain't none of my motherfucking business. Anyways. Y'all already know. Boosie really one of the real OGs. He really liked that too. But we got, we got him today. Hall of Fame. Shout out Chuck Star Films. Let's get it. What up, Tupac? Ha. What up, Big? It's almost 30 years later and they still screaming your name. You Facts. Facts, bro. Facts. Y'all, this shit might actually make me cry right now, y'all. I don't know, bro. Damn. Because I just, I don't know, lately, y'all, I've just been toe up about how just like the way the world runs and the way it works like and i know it didn't do this like when i was growing up it wasn't like this bro but now it's like you ain't got no realness you ain't got no real love you ain't got no like genuine like authenticity and you ain't got no like motivation like niggas ain't got no spine no backbone no values morals codes and it's like it be having me reminiscing you know i ain't even that old which is crazy to think about how quick you know the world could change like before my eyes it's done that shit bro it's like i really wish there was a way we could just start over it's like let's revolution let's re revolutionize godly but Pac and biggie well if I could bring back one rapper, it'd probably be Tupac. Um, he had a huge influence on the hoods, nigga, across America. Across all the neighborhoods. All, well, y'all know what I mean. Like, that's what I'm saying. So, it's like... It's just so sad, bro. To know, like, such evil and corruption can cause such just disarray and confusion... And, like, frustration, anger, sadness, you know, one death, two deaths, Biggie and Pac. That shit, really, I don't know what started it, started this world of fuckery, but, uh, we here. And I just wish, ba wish we could bring back a lot of them values, a lot of them good people, but, shit, I guess good things don't last long. We just gotta... Embrace that shit while it's here. Celebrate it while it's here for real. Shit's so rare. Hall of Fame. What up, camouflage, nigga? Fly J shining, nigga. What up, Dobie, nigga? What up, Mac Dre, nigga? I sent this out to Nipsey Hussle. You was the truth. I sent this out to Tookie Williams from Oosie. I sent this out to. Mmm. Nip another one, bro. Like, nah, I actually might cry at this, y'all. Every freaking. Like, past probably, like, three, four years, every rapper that has died, bro, I felt that shit to my core. On everything I love, bro. Like, I, that shit doesn't just pass by me. I don't treat death as, like, some, you know, oh, it just happens. Like, I get it that it does. Like, obviously, I, I'm not, like, torn up about every single person I see die. Because that's just, like, that's a lot of stress and anxiety for my body. But just me with my love of music and passion for this shit, bro. 
it's going down an evil way. It's going down a very evil and just corrupted path, bro. And it's like, we got people dying, people killing each other. Like, and it's, it's not nothing new. It's not nothing new, but it's getting a lot worse. It's getting a lot more, you know, monetized. Like, people are paying to listen to this stuff. People are paying to see this stuff. Um, People are paying to have it happen. Like, it's really just sad. I hate it, bro. Like, I'm going to try not to pause to this video, but I might have to, bro. You know, this is the type of music I like. I, stuff with a message, stuff with pain in it, with passion in it. You know, it has a purpose. That's the shit I like. Pain, passion, and purpose. In a good beat. With a real artist. <laughs> There's the five qualifications. <laughs> but I know he finna speak on this. We really needed someone. We needed this. And we needed Boosie to do it, too. I sent us out to Nipsey Hussle. You was the truth. I sent us out to Tukey Williams from Boosie Boo. I sent us mm. out to Easy E and Freeway. My favorite thug, Tupac. It ain't easy. It's for money making. Nigga, that's for real though. Like, out of all the gangsters, Tupac, bro, he was really like that. Cause like he was still a gentleman though. He was a, like, he could be a gentleman and then a gangster. You know what I'm saying? Very respectful. He knew business. He was so smart, bro. Nigga was smart. He weren't all just like gangsters. He weren't all just like guns, killing, drugs. Like, man actually had substance. He actually had a sword as hell, a lot of wisdom to tell. It's crazy, bro. That's why he probably one of my favorite gangsters. Like, you ain't, like, you dealing drugs and killing people, that shit does not make you gangster at all. I don't care who told you what what you heard, my nigga, but that's just not the case. Y'all got a lot, bro. Meech? Bro, what? Look, I don't blame. Back in the day, like Larry Hoover, Big Meech, back in the day, shit, when I wasn't even around. I really salute. I know. I know they was low key killing their communities, low key, you know. But that's not how it started, though. That's not the intention behind it. And I know inten intentions aren't everything. You know what I'm saying? Good intentions it, it leads to hell. You know what I'm saying? But that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, like, that's... That's actually exactly what the fuck I'm saying. Like, um, all this shit, hip-hop, music, um, even gang-banging, you know, being in a gang, and even selling drugs. That shit did not start off as something where we were trying to hurt our communities hurt our brothers sisters you know brothers cousins mothers all that shit but slowly over time just greed greed and pure evil messed all of that up for us bro it fucked it all up bro and rather that be the people that were directly a part of the gangs the drugs whatever that may be but i know a lot of it I blame the government. I ain't gonna lie. That's what I've said all that just to say. I blame the motherfucking government, especially within the 70s, the early 2000s. Nigga, nigga. Minorities, they were literally preyed upon. Like, they were used as basically freaking lab rats. Niggas, the government needed to make some money. They threw a bunch of drugs in the hoods. And they knew, like, the hustler's gonna hustle. You know what I'm saying? So I don't blame them for that. I don't blame them at all. It's kind of fucked up that they would they would give, uh, supply them with the shit, right? And give them what they need to make it worse, right? But then once, you know, they the government was like, oh, oh, oh shit, you know, <laughs> maybe I fucked up. Maybe we messed up gonna lock them up i feel like that's kind of fucked up bro kind of fucked up bro yeah that's how i see that bro like i wouldn't say that the same niggas nowadays getting locked up you know selling drugs and stuff because i feel like now we got way more of you know opportunities and chances to you know do better for real but back then there really was no hope there was no help 
<laughs> we was really out here just feeding for ourselves. Like we had to do with what they gave us. You know what I'm saying? That's all we had. But now a lot of people just doing it for fame, some type like money, like they not doing it to survive. They doing it for clout, fame and money. And not even money they need, money they want. And so they can go buy that, you know, a thousand dollar hoodie, a thousand dollar jeans, or a thousand dollar pair of shoes, or to buy that, you know, forty thousand dollar car. Like they don't need that shit. They really don't. You can go on Facebook Marketplace and buy a good car for seven grand. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> buy a whole outfit. You know what I'm saying? Forty dollars. Like you don't need that money. You're doing it out of greed. <laughs> and all that killing and gang shit is happening out of pride. It's just as simple as that. It's turned into some evil. Like, pride and greed, that's literally one of the deadly sins. And that's all that shit's turned to. Honestly, sad. I mean, for real though. Him too. Set up. Man's was set up for failure. I lost my nigga Dolph who represent the soul. I lost my nigga Juke who represent the no. Juice for my pops Wayne Pete. You always give game to me, nigga. So many people screaming your name. Mm. Real nigga, real nigga. Hey Charles D X. No one could take it from you. That's your name. Thanks. Real nigga, real nigga. Yeah. Hall of Fame. Your name will always ring and that won't change. Little Ivy, Mr. Brick, leader of the clip. Little D, what it do, nigga? Kobe Bryant, I shed tears for you, nigga. Cam Rick, you made. Mmm. Y'all, if I really started speaking my mind on all this shit that I really feel like, y'all think, y'all probably think I'm crazy talking about the government and setups and shit like that, but if y'all really wanted me to dive deep into it, y'all would actually think I'm crazy. My channel would probably get, you know. <laughs> banned or some shit government be after me cause that Kobe shit just didn't sit right with me I'm gonna be honest it just did it just, nah. I ain't letting that slide either like I this is shit like I never forget that shit once it's in here bro that shit staying and I'm not forgetting what happened to Kobe and how it happened bro how to f mm. see Y'all gonna make me act out of character. Me really wanna have this shit. You made my hustle above average. I send this out Thanks. to trouble, nigga. I've been thinking about you hugging on your mother, nigga. Miss Kathy miss you and she love you, nigga. Mo three. You just Ooh. had a birthday. You a OG. Yeah. Miss three. You in the Hall of Fame. Wish That's I could hear that nigga sing. That was my little man. On game. And I can't forget King Von. Real step. He said, Boosie, you a real nigga. It's the stories like Vaughn, bro. Hold on, y'all. I ain't trying to cut on camera. So I'm trying to wrap myself up. I know I've been talking a lot in this video, but I done told y'all what I'm finna do. You know, give y'all my thoughts, my opinions, and, you know, what are, what. I'm a real ass person, bro. And I'm gonna just give it straight to you how I feel and what I think and what I know. Okay? If you wanna hear, you can click off, but I appreciate y'all for staying, for real. Ones like King Von that hurts the worst because it's you understand their pain and their story and why they do the stuff they do. It's because they were at a young age. It's like they were basically they had to survive immediately, like straight from the womb, bro. And the stuff that they were taught that's the only thing they had to live by. Like they didn't have no other like when you born. All you have is the stuff people teach you. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure that's a Rod, Rod Wave lyric. Yeah. Ain't it cra It's a shame that from the time, you know, like by the time you get probably, I say 10. I say 10 years old. You know what I'm saying? 10 years old, your foundation has been set in place for you. It, like, Anything you go through, your environment, the people you hang around, the things you take in, eating, drinking, stuff like that, it's going to be with you forever. 
years one through ten it's that shit ain't going now your teenage years you know that stuff you can change it's easier to you know get it out of your system and bring something new but once like your childhood is just something that's it's gonna attach to you forever so these kids they're being brought up into the in these environments that just breed more of them it just breeds more evil more killing more all this bullshit bro and you can't blame them i get it it's not their fault you know what i'm saying it's not their fault that that's the way that's the lifestyle that they led it's not it's really not now if they're you know 13 14 years old they got a head on their shoulders and they got a good home and they choose to do that that's different but these people they were born into these neighborhoods they were born into these families and these families taught them that. Their, their neighborhoods taught them that. That's all they know. If you're a kid, you only got what, you know, the people around you telling you. You're telling me a freaking three-year-old's not going to listen to his mom, dad, cousin, brother, sisters and aunties, uncles. Of course they are, bro. Everything they say, do, everything that's happening in their community, they peeping. The kids aren't dumb. They taking in all of that shit. Rather it be consciously or subconsciously. The same thing with young boy. All these all these rappers either dying, going to jail, bro, and they so young. 20, 30 years old. There's no motherfucking reason for that. That shit really, really, really hurts me and like bothers me down to my core, bro. But it's like who like where do you even start to fix it? Like that's like that's really the question is like, do you start with the neighborhoods? Like, do you start with the kids? Do you start with the parents? Like, what is it? Like, what's going? What What will finally put an end to us killing our communities and our brothers and our even like stealing? Like, st- <sighs> stop. You know who we need to steal from? I ain't even gonna say that because then I might get got. But yeah, y'all, King Von, Young Boy. There's a lot, lot of Young Golf. Um. All of them, bro. All of them, bro. Whether they die from drugs, gun violence. <sighs> it could have been preventable. It really could have. But shit is just fucking sad. And it's a cycle. It really is. People say, oh, it's just it's a cycle of violence. And it absolutely is. But we got to stop. You know, it might not be your fault that you are the way you are, but it is your responsibility to change that. If you are, you know, in a tough situation or, you know, you're not the person you want to be, you want to become better, you can do that shit. Even in your, you can heal. There's a way to heal and there's definitely a better way to cope and a better way to express your feelings than, you know, killing, robbing, drug dealing. Okay, so we got to stop this. We got to teach our kids that, that these things are not good. We are, our people did this, our, you know, we did this because we had to survive off this stuff. But you guys, you know, y'all don't got to do this because we made it away for y'all. We done, you know, made peace. But it's really hard to do that. We got kids raising kids nowadays. Like I said. These kids, King Von, Young Boy, Dolph, these people are, <laughs> bruh, in your 20s, my nigga, you is still a child. You are still growing and adapting just as quickly as you were when you were a kid. You might feel a little older, that's for damn sure, because I know I'm feeling it, and, you know, I'm about to be 20, which is crazy to say, old as hell, but... <laughs> It's it's very hard. It's very hard to get out of the cycle and to stop, especially in your younger age. And these people, they had fame and money, basically everything they wanted at their fingertips, like right out of childhood, basically. Hold on. And although they lived, you know, a rough life, well, I guess that played a, a part in it because, like, they weren't used to it. They weren't rich. They weren't used to the fame and the riches. But uh, it definitely caught up to them. Like you mix. But I, what I don't get is like once you have the money, 
it's got to be an addiction, bro. I wouldn't have. I've never been in the streets. I've never gotten into street shit. But surrounded by it, yes. But it's like you make so much money. And your family has so much pride in the fact that you really set them up for life. And like you really made it out of a really, really, really difficult situation that nobody not a lot of people understand. Not a lot of people can do. And you decide to still feed into the same fear, the same negativity, the same evil, like these same tendencies. And it's like, I get it. That's what you've been doing your whole life. But you, y'all got to grow up. You should not be doing the same things you were in your teens and your 20s and vice versa. You should not. There's no reason for that shit, bro. You be on little boy shit, and you gonna go out a little boy way. <laughs> Beefing and killing, that's not cool, bro. That's not cool. Vaughn, he was just trying to square up. A fight. You know what I'm saying? Why, why, why niggas ain't trying to scrap no more? Why? Like, having a gun is not, does not make you tough. I promise you it does not, bro. You gotta have foundation. Foundation makes you tough. You know, having a spine makes you tough. You know? Having responsibilities makes you tough. That's the shit that makes you tough. Not having a gun. Not killing people. Not having a bunch of money. Nah. Foundation. Stability makes you tough. (laughs) Drive makes you tough. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Last but not least, the gym. Working out makes you tough for sure. So it's like y'all think of it the wrong way. Y'all are y'all want to objectify tough as like these things that you can get, like something you can grab and touch, like money, cars, drugs, guns. No, everything you want to be, nothing materialistic is gonna make you that. If you want to be somebody, you gotta start within yourself. There's nothing you can buy, nothing you can take. <laughs> to get you that. This is not. You're going to have to work on yourself. You're going to have to work on it. Hustle on yourself, nigga. You can hustle all this other shit, but you can't work on yourself. You can't put in the grind to make yourself better. It's just crazy. Anyways, y'all. I'll be ranting, you know. Real step. He said, Boosie, you a real nigga. When I met him. Crazy because he died the same night. And I met him. The whole Ooh. world won't forget him. Huh? So many people That's screaming right. names. Real nigga, real nigga. You up in my hall of fame. No one could take it from you. That's your name. What you is? Real nigga, real nigga. You up in my hall of fame. I like this one. Your name will always ring and never change. Straight up, nigga. A lot of niggas don't like to give me my flowers, J. I'ma give my own self my flowers, nigga. Yeah. I got two. Nah, Boosie, if you ain't getting from nobody else, you got it from me, my boy. I done told you now. You really one of them ones? You really, when everybody else sat down, you really one of them ones that stood up. You feel me? And that says a lot. I don't say that about a lot of people. You a real stand-up nigga. Even though you falling a little bit. Who don't? Who don't? Even angels fall. You know? But it ain't about that. It's... Within the falling and within the, you know, obstacles and all this, can you still remain real? Can you still remain yourself? Honest. Can you be an honest person within all that? The, like, that's what they, not, if a person was perfect, then what the fuck do they got to prove? What the fuck do they got to be real for if they're perfect, you know? <laughs> it's It's the difficulties and the flaws that really make a person worth knowing and worth you know living honestly we were all perfect that should be born there'd be no reason there'd be no reason to be here though we're all put here to work on ourselves and overcome these obstacles and overcome you know all this shit that we facing and boosie did that and stood on all 10 while doing it like i noticed he ain't skipped a beat he really ain't skipped a beat bro like i remember even the, the young niggas they could they every time a young nigga try to diss Boosie, 
Boosie gonna f- put his foot down and put that nigga back on back in his place. But he's a very respectful person too. I said that. I said the same thing about Tupac. You can't be a gangster without res- being respectful, bro. If you can't be a respectful, responsible person, that's not gangster, bro. You a hoe for real. You a hoe. You a lame. I'm so sorry. You gotta have respect for people. Respect for yourself first and foremost. <laughs> Love yourself, and then you know. Don't be just a hater. Don't be a hater. Don't be a lame. Don't be a loser. You know, nobody wants to hang with a loser, for real. Um, If you're taking L's back to back to back, you got to really look, look at yourself. You know, I'm, sometimes it's hard to do that because life's fucked up, the world's fucked up, and we want to blame everything around us because everything around us is fucked up, but sometimes it's actually us. Something in us is messed up that we got to... That's something we can't fix, though. We can't fix, you know, world hunger, and we can't go and fix all these, you know, killings and stuff. But something we can't fix is us. If you got a problem, if you got a flaw, that shit can be healed. That shit can be fixed. I promise. You just gotta actually work on that shit, bro. And you know, that's just the type of music I like. Y'all know this is the type of song I fuck with. I know I did a little, whole lot of yapping, but I really hope that a lot of y'all did stick to the end. And, you know, pick out some wisdom from this gibberish and this yapping. (laughs) Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Subscribe for more. I appreciate all the love and support. And I hope to see you on the next one.